Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. At the end of my speech, the audience will be able to summarize why the 10th Armored Division was the unsung heroes of Bastogne during the Battle of the Bulge. Just to set the scene for the early hours of Bastogne featured 2,800 U.S. soldiers and 75 tanks against 50,000 German soldiers. The 101st was the most recognized, was one of the most recognized divisions during World War II for what they did at Bastogne, but they were not the first to arrive at Bastogne. The 101st gathered fame across America while overshadowing a group of men that truly stood alone. The 10th Armored arrived eight hours before the 101st and anybody else at Bastogne. And it would be an understatement to say that I'm a history buff, especially when it comes to World War II. And I've read many books on the Battle of Bastogne and the Battle of the Bulge. So this is not going to be useful in everyday life, but it is an important story to tell. This speech is the condensed story of the 10th Armored's role in the Battle of the Bulge and how they laid the groundwork for the 101st Airborne's fame at the Battle of Bastogne. The Battle of Bastogne caught the Allies by complete surprise. On December 17, 1944, the Allies' progress was halted due to a massive offensive that was laid out in the Ardennes by Adolf Hitler. The Allied, leader, the Allied leaders shifted the majority of their defenses away from the Ardennes forest because they deemed it as unfit terrain to merit a full-scale attack. Well, they were wrong. The German army launched 200,000 German soldiers and 340 tanks in an initial attempt to cut the Allied lines in half. When the Allied leaders learned of the attack, various units were immediately dispatched north to hold off the initial wave of German soldiers that were sent. The 10th Armored was the first division to move north, and they were ordered by General Patton into the tiny town in Belgium called Bastogne, which Bastogne was a hub town that comprised of seven roads in and out, which made it ideal for German resupply lines and vehicles and whatnot and they were the only combat unit that, that was in Bastogne for the initial eight hours of the German assault. Um, they were basically ordered to set up defensive lines around, in and around Bastogne to hopefully slow down the attack and let reinforcements come in. They were one division of soldiers against eight, division, eight divisions of German soldiers. And after eight long hours of constant attacks, the 101st arrived along with various other divisions to help reinforce the 10th Armored and bolster the defenses of Bastogne. The initial confusion that was caused by the various strongholds that the 10th Armored set up around Bastogne slowed down the German lines to allow the 101st and the other groups of soldiers to sneak in, sneak in undetected. Well, not long after the 101st and all the other various groups arrived, the German soldiers surrounded Bastogne and cut them off from all other outside sources. And as this happened, Bastogne was basically leveled to nothing but rubble from artillery fire and tank fire and whatnot. And the 10th Armored's role was basically to bounce from attack to attack. They had to pick the attack that they went to based on if German armor, German tanks showed up and also due to the inclement weather that was setting in, the fog that was setting in, it made it impossible to decipher where airdrops were gonna happen. So airdrops did not happen, they were not resupplied for days, and by December 22nd, artillery shells were rationed to 10 rounds per gun, per artillery gun per day, and it was down to, the order was given for one round per American soldier to fire at German soldiers, and Luckily, this only had to last for about a day because the fog lifted and they were resupplied on December 23rd. The supply drops were primarily ammo for the four out of five days that they occurred, but the situation was still grim inside of Bastogne uh, because they were still surrounded by German forces and were cut off from the rest of the army. The 10th Armored spent the next two days doing basically what they were doing before, bouncing from attack to attack, showing up where they were needed to to fight off the German tanks, the German panzer tanks. And casualties were beginning to pile up on both sides, but on Christmas Day, they were given 
given somewhat of a relief. They were given somewhat of a relief uh, because of the holiday. And the 20, on the 26th of December, General Patton broke through the German lines to open up passages to Bastogne to allow the injured to be uh, evac'd out and for ammo and fresh reinforcements to be brought in as well as food. And almost 80% of the 10th Armored was either wounded or killed during during Bastogne, during the siege of Bastogne. And they did not leave Bastogne until January 18th, but after Patton broke through, they were able to basically move back into the city and allow other, other units to take their place on the front line. So in conclusion, the Battle of Bastogne was vital to the Allied success in the, in the Battle of the Bulge. The fight might not have ever happened had the 10th Armor not arrived when they did had not arrived when they did in Bastogne to endure the initial wave of German attacks. And the 101st Airborne might have received all the fame from the battle, but at no point did they stand alone. The 10th Armored Tiger Division did. <laughs>